Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Hero's Journey Project. We're on episode eight now. Chugging right along, see what we've been up to this week. Let me share the screen real quick here. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so I was reading some Wonder Woman comics. So again, Wonder Woman uh, comics from this era. Uh, the early issues had four stories in them. So I read all four stories. Uh, these this issue has the first appearance of the Duke of Deception, Earl of Greed, Lord Conquest. These are all generals uh, in uh, in Ares' army, uh, the God of War, Mars. It goes by a few different names. Now, th now the early Wonder Woman issues include a feature about Wonder Women of history, and they started they started did start in issue number one. And runs to issue number 66 and their true tales of um, some women who did some pretty interesting and amazing stuff back in the day. This one had Clara Barton, who's the founder of the Red Cross, the American chapter. She's featured in the issue. Uh, also in one, this is uh, one of the pages for Wonder Woman uh, number two. It's the men behind Wonder Woman. So it's actually a really interesting shot. Uh, you have Dr. William Moulton Marston, who is the creator of Wonder Woman, and he's the writer. He, uh, according to the page here that they show, he's a well-known psychologist and inventor of the lie detector. And you have H.G. Peter, who's a cartoonist. Um, and then Sheldon Mayer creator of Scribbly and editor of all the magazines in the All-American Comic Group of Superman DC Publications. And you have M.C. Gaines, originator of the comic magazine, former school principal and army officer. And then he was president and general manager of All-American Comics. Uh, I believe Mr. Gaines is, has a pretty well-known comic collection with collectors. Uh, if you can get a Gaines file copy, you're doing really well in terms of that pedigree. Here's an interesting panel. Uh, it's Wonder Woman spanking uh, someone that she's captured who was, had her captured originally, and she's teaching her a lesson with the spanking. I have to say, Wonder Woman number two, there's a lot of uh, bondage-type references. It, most women get tied up in this issue for various reasons. Um, they're... Um, uh, they're tied up. There's chains, ropes, spanking. It, yeah, the, there were some accusations of bondage subtext in the stories, and certainly these early Wonder Woman issues um, did lend credibility to those accusations. Then we're moving right along to uh, Wonder Woman number three. Again, four stories uh, in the issue. Woman, Wonder Woman celebrates Diana's Day, so it's the equivalent of Christmas and giving presents and someone goes around in a similar type of uh, th thing as Santa. It's, it, so it's very interesting. Good, good story. Uh, anyway, uh, Baroness Paula von Gunther, who was one of Wonder Woman's uh, arch nemesis from the start, turns out, tur turns into her ally and she's no longer a Nazi agent. Wonder Woman number four, again, four stories in this issue. Now, uh, Baron, oh, that's a typo there, but Baroness Paula von Gunther becomes an Amazon. She's not a Bronus, she's a Baroness. So she's, she passed, uh, anyway, uh, Paula von Gunther passed uh, some trials and now she becomes uh, an Amazon. Now we move on to World's Finest Comics. In this, these are, uh, these issues even now, so most of the regular comics are about 68 pages. World's Finest Comics is 96 pages. It's huge. Um, you know, uh, the stories I read out of that were Superman, Zatara, Star Spangled Kid, Green Arrow, and Batman. World's Finest number nine. Again, 96 pages. I read five stories out of there, Superman, Zatara, Star Spangled Kid, Green Arrow, and Batman. In this issue, Stripes he invents a time machine, Star Spangled Kid's sidekick, he invents a time machine and they use it and it works. 
I don't know if you'll ever see it again. I don't know if it's something that they can just use in the future to turn back time whenever they feel like it. But the time machine is sort of a cannon that shoots you back through time. The Joker makes a cameo appearance in the Star Spangled Kid story. It's a one panel, really quick sort of a gag as uh, Joker is running away and Batman and Robin are chasing him. And uh, then, uh, yep, those are the stories. And that brings us to the end. So that's what I've read this week. Uh, a couple 96-page juggernauts, uh, a lot of Wonder Woman stories, four, four stories in each issue. So it, it was a lot of stories, even though I only read five issues. It uh, kept me busy. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate uh, anyone who stops by and takes time to watch and listen. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to let me know, and I will respond accordingly. Till next time, take care.